So I've been prototyping out a little website builder where a user can create an initial project and it's going to use a template to kind of show you a one page site. And then they can come through and they can refine the site by basically prompting over here. So for example, we got this like blue theme going on. Um, we have like different pages, for example. Let's just go ahead and click on this icon here. I'm gonna say refactor to make the site green themed. Also change the brand name to Smart Lawn Cutting. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and just click refine. And what this does is it's gonna kick off a background process that's going to figure out what pages in my application it needs to modify. So if you click here, you see I have a couple of routes already. I have a home page, a showcase page, a style sheet, and a JavaScript uh, .js file, a script.js file. And on the right, you'll see that it pops down to let the user know that it's currently modifying a couple of pages. So eventually it will kind of get through all the pages and update the shared style sheet for all these pages. And I should be able to hard refresh this page. This is just using an iframe. And the iframe is pointing to another HTTP server that's hosting on my machine. Okay, so that's totally done. Now if I wanted to kind of do a hard refresh, I could do that. And that should show you the changed style. So it's a little bit more of a green theme. It kind of has a lawn cutting. I'm not sure what happened to my header here. It's kind of gone. Okay, so all the text in the header is now white text. So I'll have to fix that. You messed up the white text in the header. Please make it accessible. Again, this is just a really rough prototype and I wanted to kind of build upon this and see how far I can take this and if this would even be useful. Eventually, I want to be able to click a deploy button and have this entire application be hosted on a domain that you could hook up using like a, a C name or something to point to however I plan to host it behind the scenes. All right, so that looks a little bit better, but the moment I scroll down, it like makes the header a different color. It's not accessible, but I'm going to see if I can move this contact form to a separate page. So I'm going to say, please move the contact uh, form, get in touch to a completely separate page and put the link in the header to link to it. Okay, let's see if my, uh, my logic is smart enough to basically create a brand new route. Cause right now we don't have a route for the contact. And so eventually it should try to create a brand new, okay, here it is, the contact page. It's trying to create a contact page. Looks like it's done. So if I click it, it'll actually redirect the iframe over to that contact page. Right now there's no styling for it. Um, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. I might have to do a hard refresh to kind of fix that styling. I'm also not sure why it's updating the showcase. So I'll have to kind of like figure that out. Let me do a hard refresh and see if the uh, styling for contact will be a little bit better. Go here, switch to contact. And there you have it. I do think there's a couple of bugs, like this stuff should have finished by now. I don't know if the open AI call is just like broken or if my backend is swallowing errors because I don't actually see any errors. But let me walk you through how this kind of works and maybe this could be kind of a learning experience because this is actually um, a little bit complicated. All right, so we have a user and when they first load up this site, it's going to basically create a new project. So I have like a database. I am using Convex for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, that's going to invoke a backend mutation, okay? And then step one would be, Great initial project. And for right now, I just have some like hard coded HTML and CSS and JavaScript. So I'll say like create um, initial project mutation. And this is going to basically create those and store them in not only the database, but also I have a file storage. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say like, I'm gonna say store file in metadata for path. So like if we were to go to my database over here and go to data, you'll see that I have a project and inside of this project, I have pages. So click on this project ID, go to pages, and you will see that we have a contact path. We have a showcase path, a script.js, a styles.js, and then the root. So once we create the initial project and all of the pages that are related to that initial project, what I do then is I make a request to open AI. Um, at some point I wanna bring in Claude and see how that'll do, but basically I need to figure out using the current paths in the system. So like figure out what paths need to be updated based on the prompt. So I kind of pass it in an array and say, hey, we have like these three paths. We have a index file, a style sheet, and a JavaScript file. Which one of these do you think needs to be updated to actually achieve the refinement that the user asked? Okay, and then once we figure that out, I basically fire off multiple scheduled actions. So I'll go ahead and say like um, update page action, or if the OpenAI gives us back a path that we haven't seen before, what it's going to do is going to actually do a create page action. 
So it's going to do one of two options. It's either going to create any new unseen page. So I'll say for A is create unseen path. Over here for A, I'll say create um, existing, or I'll say update existing page. So for example, if you need to update the header or update the landing page, this would probably get invoked. And the cool thing about this is if you have like multiple pages, like let's say you have like, I don't know, 100 pages, it can pick and choose which ones it needs to update and it's going to do this concurrently. So all these things behind the scenes, if this is working correctly, you'd see them pop up. And as it's modifying this, you would see them eventually finish and you can kind of navigate over to them. And so I'm going to go ahead and just bring over this uh, storage database again because we're going to need that in a second. But in these actions, these are scheduled to run in the background and it could take up to like, you know, a couple seconds or a minute to finish, depending on how big the page is and how much styling you have and how much JavaScript you have. And it's going to ask OpenAI once again, it's going to say, hey, um, regenerate this page based on the prompt. And I think we also pass in the relevant pages that it might need to be able to achieve that. So for example, when I tell it to add a new page in the header of the index, it's going to go and probably create that new path. And then it's going to update that path page, but then it's also going to go back and try to update the current root page, or maybe even like the index.js, because I, I believe the header is shared between them. Okay, but anyway, it's going to ask OpenAI like, hey, can you rewrite this code? And then eventually it'll come through and I'm going to store it back. So I'll go ahead and say store um, updated HTML, JavaScript, CSS into convex file storage. Okay, and this is the same thing, like it's going to go ahead and do that. And then also it's going to update the metadata so that eventually it'll be done. And then these little loaders on my page will kind of like go away. So these will kind of finish. So right now you can only do one refinement at a time until all these things finish. Like right now, if I go and try to check out and do another refinement, like it won't let you because I have to figure out um, race conditions. Like if one's already being updated, I have to make sure I have a queue there to not allow it to be updated um, again until it's done with the first update. But this is kind of the approach I'm currently taking. I know it's very rudimentary and I'm kind of omitting a lot of the details of the code. But one thing I want to talk about is the preview. So I also have a Hono application running locally right now. Again, this is all localhost. So in localhost 3001, I have a Hono application. And again, this is what I'm using for the iframe. So when the user loads up a browser, it actually has an iframe in it that's pointing to localhost 3001. And I basically just tack on a path here. So like this will be like a path. And then whatever the URL is up here inside the iframe, it basically allows you to navigate the whole site. So like if I were to go to the contact page or the um, or projects page, notice that the iframe under the hood actually redirects. And when I click back, it takes me back to the home page. Let me go ahead and say uh, use iframe to preview the site. Now, right now it's kind of limited because I can only kind of have one Hono application for a project ID. Eventually, I'm going to try to get this thing deployed out to, I don't know, CloudFront so that I can have custom domains. I can have like a preview domain. I can have an actual production domain. And inside of this website builder, I can click the deploy button to ship all that stuff to S3 and have all your static assets basically hosted from CloudFront or whatever I de decide to do. Maybe it could be a simple Hono application to serving that stuff as like a proxy. I haven't really figured it out. I'm still just playing around with it. But the idea is that this thing is going to fetch the site files based on the path. So again, if I go to my data over here, you see all these have paths in them. They also have a project ID and a page file ID. So like if you were to try to go to this application, which is going to be scoped to this project ID, I'm going to say project ID, put a colon there. It's actually going to fetch any file related to that path from my convex database and then serve that based on what the extension is. It kind of changes some response headers and stuff like that. That's the overall design of this. I may make some more videos in the future if I do continue working on this. There's a lot of other side projects I want to go back to and actually finish before I get distracted once again. But I thought this is pretty cool. There's a lot of no code tools out there, but they show like the code to the user. And I think eventually we need to hit an abstraction layer where the code is just completely obscured like you don't even need to see the code you should be able to modify a site on the fly and the ai should be able to traverse all of your files and figure out what pages it needs to update and this would obviously get more complex if you want to actually have like a full stack react application that has like a database and a backend honestly that's like beyond the scope of what i'm trying to prototype i'm trying to keep this as simple as possible where everything is just static html and static javascript and css 
But now you don't need a CMS, right? You don't need a custom CMS dashboard for your clients to come in and log in because their CMS is basically a chat panel, which maybe this is a bad user experience. Maybe this is a good user experience, but yeah, I guess let me know if you think this idea is cool. Maybe I'll continue pursuing it a little bit uh, in my free time, or maybe I'll let it die like all my other side projects, but it was fun kind of building out this prototype and making a little video about it. Have a good day and happy coding.